Hi, my name is Hendrik and I'm the founder of WMExperts.online and I'm happy to introduce a new video of our series called Understand SAP EWM, a series of videos where we try to simplify the understanding of complex features and functionalities in EWM. Today we are talking about wave and resource management and as usual the disclaimer mentioned on WMExperts dot online slash disclaimer is also valid for all content which is published in and around this video. That's it for my side for the beginning. I'll come back after the functional part of the video but now you can just relax, lean back and soak up some EWM knowledge. Have fun! Before we start doing anything in our warehouse, we receive different kind of requests to move specific objects from A to B. These requests might come from inside or outside our company and can be based on deliveries, stock transfers or posting changes. So it might be a request to move a given product from our warehouse to our end customer or simply to move a pallet from reserve storage to the pick phase. In SAP EWM, we call these documents warehouse requests, and for the matter of simplicity, we will now concentrate on outbound deliveries as one representative group for these warehouse requests. So the delivery is our warehouse request, and the items of our deliveries are our warehouse request items. First lesson learned, save the word warehouse request. To make it understandable, imagine a big box of big balls with each big ball containing a number of small balls. The box is our request buffer, the big balls are our warehouse requests, and the small balls are the warehouse request items. From now onwards, we ignore the big balls as we, and EWM also, are only interested in the small ones, our warehouse request items. So what happens now in between the receipt of such requests and the actual execution on a RF, tablet, smartphone, or any other device? Having these warehouse requests in our EWM system, we know now that we have to do something. Okay, so far. As a first step, we have to make a decision about when to do what. So basically, out of everything that we have in our box, we have to separate one part in order to define a load of work, which is to be executed in a given time frame. Start at a given point in time and complete at a given point in time. Try to think about a couple smaller boxes into which we distribute the small balls based on their characteristics, recipient, type of products, physical area of the warehouse, etc. Each small box has a start and end time, and some more characteristics which we ignore for now. Each of these small boxes now defines a load of work for a given time frame. In EWM, we call them waves. Second lesson learned, save the word, wave. Waves can be created based on so-called wave templates, which hand down times such as start, cutoff, or end time, and a couple of other attributes to the waves. In SAP EWM, we find these templates based on the condition technique, which is enabling us to consider any fields from our warehouse request header or item in order to find a specific wave template. So far, so good. Now we do have our wave, and we need to decide who in the warehouse is going to do what. Not everybody or every kind of equipment should or can do everything due to technical preferences or constraints. However, all resources should be utilized in the most efficient way. For the following explanations, we do only need one of our waves or boxes created above. We split our wave now into smaller work packages, which should later be assigned to resources, having the characteristics which are required to execute the tasks within the specific work package. In SAP EWM, we call these executable work packages warehouse orders, and they are created based on the warehouse tasks, which in turn are created once our wave is being released. At this point in time, we apply the so-called warehouse order creation rules, which represent the technical base to cut our total workload into the work packages. Third lesson learned. The wave release triggers the creation of warehouse tasks based on the warehouse request items and the warehouse order creation rules build warehouse orders based on the warehouse tasks. Fine, we now know what we have to do in a given time frame. Remember the term wave, and we know what we want to be executed by one resource at a time. Remember the term warehouse order. In the next step, we need to make sure that the most urgent work packages are to be executed before the less urgent ones, 
and we need to make sure that the work packages which require specific handling are assigned to resources that are able to execute specific handling. To achieve this, we make use of the resource management features of SAP EWM. First, we assign our warehouse orders to different groups. In EWM, we call these groups queues. We are usually working with many different queues. For instance, due to the fact that the warehouse orders require different handling, or due to the fact that some have to be processed in one area of my warehouse and others in a different area. Next, we bring these queues in one or more sequences and assign one sequence of queues to one group of resources. The same queues might follow sequence A for resource group X and sequence B for resource group Y. Now we finally know which resources will have access to which work packages, and we know which group of work packages is going to be processed first. To reduce the complexity here, we will ignore how the warehouse orders are sort sorted within the queues. Still, we might not know whether all resources belonging to the given resource group are able to process all warehouse orders from a given queue. To implement the required rules, here we use so-called resource types in SAP EWM. Every resource working in a warehouse, resource either in terms of a human being or in terms of a device operated by a human or autonomously, will be assigned to one resource type. This type hands down the ability of handling specific types of handling units and accessing types of bins to the resources. The settings are evaluated against each warehouse order. Remember our work packages, which should potentially be processed. Imagine it happening like this. Technically not 100% correct, but good approach to understand the concept. That's it. Not that difficult, I think. So the next time we open our RF, tablet, smartphone, or whatever we're using to work in our own warehouse, we will know now why the given request to move stuff from A to B is shown on our device and how it got there. Thank you, Inga. I would like to close this video with three more points, just real quick. First one is your knowledge. I put you three links just below this video with the, some good readings, the ones that I used to uh, build up my theoretical knowledge in this area and to which I can highly recommend before you, um, as a reading before you jump into the project. Um, there's also a link um, to the website of CK Ready, one of our colleagues in this area with a good reading about wave management. And um, second point is our service, wmexperts.online. We have a team of certified EWM consultants, also knowledge and other uh, modules uh, which help you in your projects. We offer an on-demand service remotely or on-site, but um, always trying to help you help yourself. So the first request is always free. You can give it a try. Just check out the website. And the last point is our channel. There's a subscribe button somewhere here. And uh, if you hit this button, if you subscribe to our channel, you will always be notified about new videos once they are published. We'd appreciate a comment in case you like the video. Give us a like and um, hope to see you next time for the next video. Thanks and bye.